Hi, my name is Jan, and welcome to another Bishoujo action figure review. Today we'll be looking at Snail Shell Studios' Tapagao Milk Tea 112 scale action figure. As a bonus, we'll also be looking at the companion piece, GN Project Sunechan Hoodie. Both the figure and hoodie were released in October 2022. Snail Shell Studio is a Chinese figure maker, and they've made quite a few figures since 2019. I don't own any of their prior figures, but they seem to be similar to this one in terms of articulation and sculpt quality. Before we get into it, Amiyami had an exclusive bonus item in the form of this acrylic coaster. It features artwork of milk tea on the front and back, so you can choose which side you like. It's quite large for a coaster too, at 12 centimeters in diameter. It's a nice little bonus, but if you don't care for it, you can just purchase the figure by itself. The figure's box is similar in size to a standard Figma box, just a little taller and deeper. It features different photos of the figure on the front, top, left, and right sides, while it shows artwork of the character on the bottom. The photos and logos have a gloss finish to them, while the rest of the box has a flat finish. The back of the box features photos of the figure, the accessories, and the movable eye feature. It also shows that you'll need modeling tools such as a nipper, hobby knife, and tweezers to assemble the weapons. I was surprised to see the Ami Ami logo on the back of the box, and it appears that they are the distributor of the figure. The figure and accessories come in a plastic tray as usual, while the plastic runners for the guns, water slide decals, and instructions all come in a box stored under the tray. The box doubles as a beach background for the figure, and there are perforations to flatten it out. The sculpting of the figure is excellent. Starting with her head sculpt, we get two different face plates, one normal and one smiling. They're both very pleasing sculpts with beautiful faces. The eyes are nice and glossy looking, and we'll be talking more about them later as they are the movable type, which is something Snail Shell has done with some of their other figures. I've often talked about how Figmas have hair sculpts that are on the softer side, and how I'd like to see a little more sharpness. Well, this figure's hair is a perfect example of what I like to see in a hair sculpt. Milk Tea's hair has excellent definition, and the ends of her hair are nice and sharp. If I had to complain about anything, it's that the separation between the front part of her hair and the rear part is way too obvious, and I think they could have hidden it a little better. It looks good from the front, but it's very apparent from the sides. There's only one other negative about the head sculpt, and it's the substructure that the faceplates are attached to. You can see that it doesn't transition smoothly here under the jawbone area, and it's a little distracting from some angles once you know about it. Now this may just be unique to my figure, as the smiling faceplate looks much better in this area and transitions smoother, but I also have to wonder why they extended it this far down. I think shaving this off a little will solve the problem, and it will still be able to give support to the faceplate. Moving on to the bikini clad body, we can see more beautiful sculpting and I like the balance of her body being somewhat toned and yet also conveying softness. And that softness is exemplified in these areas where her bikini is visibly pressing into her skin, and it's a quite realistic effect. However, you might argue that her bikini is a little too tight in some areas. Anyway, her body also has a futuristic cyberpunk kind of look with these small implants found on the front and back of her torso. Her white stockings also have a futuristic look to them, and they might even be cybernetic legs. Her derriere is separately sculpted from her legs, and it looks great when she's standing, but once you bend her legs at the hips, it starts to look a little wonky. I understand why they went with this method as it hides the gaps in the legs that allow her to do the splits, but I think I would have rather they went with an approach like the SH Figure Arts Rainbow Mika where her butt cheeks are part of her leg sculpts. Sure, you see the articulation gaps when she bends over, but overall I think it's a more appealing look for a scantily clad figure. Speaking of articulation, let's go over her articulation points. You have a ball jointed head, and this ball joint is actually a tiny dumbbell joint, which helps a bit, but not a lot since her hair restricts a lot of the motion anyway. She has a ball jointed shoulder with a hinge, allowing the arm to rotate and move outward. Bicep swivel at her armlet, double jointed elbow, allowing for a complete bend of the arm, which is great to see. 
The wrists are typical for this type of figure and they are hinged and can swivel above and below the joint to allow the hands to be posed at a wide variety of angles. Ball jointed upper torso using another tiny dumbbell joint. Range of motion here is not great, but that would have required a bigger gap, kind of like what Good Smile did with Figma Swimsuit Darkness. So I'm okay with Snail Shell choosing aesthetics over range of motion. The legs are on a ball joint at the hips, and the legs can be pulled down a bit to allow for a wider range of motion. There are leg swivels at the thighs, conveniently hidden by these black bands. Her knees are double jointed and can bend this far back. Her ankles are hinged and can swivel above and below the joint, with the lower swivel also providing the ankle tilts. Finally, her toes are hinged and can bend this far. So there's pluses and minus to this articulation. Her arms and legs are very poseable, and the double jointed elbows and knees are better than most of the figures out there in terms of range of motion. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the neck and upper torso articulation is very limited, mostly due to the hair sculpt and the choice to prioritize aesthetics over posability. While more posability is always welcome, I understand why they went in this direction, as this is a very aesthetically pleasing figure, and overall I'm perfectly fine with it. You can still create some great poses, and she holds her accessories just fine. So we already talked about her two faceplates, and they swap very much like a Figma faceplate, where you remove the front of the hair and the face can be switched out with the other one. The back of the hair can also be removed. Both of these faceplates feature movable eyes, and a tool to move them is included. I always like seeing this feature in figures, and it allows you to have the character looking in the direction you desire. However, you could drive yourself crazy trying to get each eye in just the right position. You get three pairs of hands, two open hands, two hands with trigger fingers, and two hands for gripping things. You also get an extra pair of feet. The only difference is that one pair has holes on the bottom for use with the included footstand. The footstand is thankfully not too small and is basically just the Snail Shell Studio logo. The foot peg is somewhat in the center of the stand, just slightly offset to the right. I would have rather seen a full figure stand with a support arm, but I'm guessing that would have driven up the cost, and it should be noted that Snail Shell Studio has produced a stand as a separate product. One of the defining features of this figure are the two guns she comes with. These are officially called Pleasant Urban Stress Relief Weapons, a light type and heavy type. The ammo is apparently Boba Milk Tea, which is where the figure gets her name. I guess she shoots boba milk tea into people's mouths? I, I don't really know. The guns come in model kit form, unassembled on runners. You'll need a bit of modeling skill to make these, but they're not too difficult. The box and instructions suggest having a nipper to cut the parts from the runners, a modeling knife for cutting off sprues and excess plastic, and tweezers for helping with the small parts and water slide decals. Glue isn't necessary since the parts snap together, but some parts can fall off easily, so you might want to glue them, like this part of the scope, on the heavy gun which kept falling off for me. The included instructions are pretty clear, and the only issue I had was trying to figure out what was dark gray versus light gray in the painting guide. Some parts do come pre-painted, but if you want the guns to look like they're supposed to, you'll need to paint some of the parts yourself. They recommend these five Tamiya paint colors. I didn't have these, so I just used what I thought would look cool. If you do decide to paint, you should paint some of the parts before assembly, like these details here, which would be way more difficult to paint afterwards. I wish they had pre-painted all of the parts, especially since some of the details are super small. A fine point pen for panel lines are good for these small details, but some of the details are so small that I resorted to using a paint wash for things like these tiny details on the scope of the heavy gun. I also messed up painting some details on the light gun and made the newbie mistake of using paint thinner to try and fix it. Suffice to say, I used too much and it caused the plastic to basically shatter into bits. So I reconstructed it with the help of some bondic and after some sanding and painting, it looks pretty decent again. Some of the parts are extremely small, like these small valves or whatever they are on top of this canister, so you also might need some sort of magnifying tool if your eyesight isn't too good. For added detail, water slide decals are provided, and there are a lot of them. 
I think I spent more time putting on decals than anything else. A lot of these decals are extremely tiny as well, so it's helpful to use tweezers or the tip of a hobby knife to position them, and I definitely needed a magnifier to put these on. However, once you've endured that trial, the end result is quite spectacular, and the guns start to feel like the main thing you're buying here, and milk tea is just the accessory to hold them for display. The boba milk tea looks pretty realistic, and I love how the translucency of the plastic actually helps convey that milky appearance. The guns fit in Milk T's hands well, but it can be kind of tricky getting the guns into her grip due to their thumbhole stocks. For this reason, I tend to just leave her hands attached to the guns and just remove her hands from the wrist pegs if I want to unequip her gun. The last things in the box are a flyer advertising milk tea on one side and other snail shell products on the other. There's a nice illustration of milk tea complete with lipstick kiss mark in red foil and two extra wrist pegs and an extra eye tool. Paint is overall done well. Her hair has some shading but I do think it could use a tad more to help bring out the details. The face plates are also nicely painted with blushing cheeks and sharply defined eyelashes and eyebrows. The eyes have well printed details with a glossy look. The skin of her body doesn't have any shading, but that's okay as the sculpt is strong enough that natural shading is adequate. It also helps that the skin is not perfectly smooth, giving it a softer, less plasticky look. The cybernetic nodes on her body are painted cleanly, and her bikini has some great detailing like these thin white lines on her top and the glossy paint to suggest a clear plastic material. As mentioned earlier, the guns have a few parts that are pre-painted, and those parts look great with a clean and consistent paint application. Again, I would have liked to see all the parts pre-painted just to make this kit a little more beginner friendly. As for scale, Milk T measures 5 and 7 eighths inches, which is about 14 and a half centimeters. Here she is with various figmas, SH Figure Arts Chun-Li, Mayfex Spider-Gwen, Marvel Legends Spider-Gwen, Sosai Shoujo Tei-In Madoka, Re Body Tech Cameo, and Storm Collectibles Tyrus Flare. She's a pretty good size that will fit in with a wide range of figures. The ball joint for the head is smaller than most, and I don't have a figure that can swap heads with her without modification. The wrist pegs are also on the smaller side, so Figma hands won't work. The hands for Mayfix Spider Gwen are the only ones that can kind of attach that I have. The way Milk T's body is designed reminds me a lot of model kit action figures like Frame Arms Girls and Megami Device. For instance, you can pull the arms and legs off at the bicep cuts and thigh cuts, respectively. I was able to easily attach a frame arms girl arm to milk tea, but the leg peg was a little too big. I suspect you can also swap parts with other Snail Shell Studios figures, but this is my first one, so I can't test that. As mentioned at the beginning of the review, I also picked up the GN Project Option Costume Sunechan hoodie in fluorescent yellow-green, which released at the same time as milk tea and matches her guns. It comes in a little baggie, and mine wasn't sealed, so I was able to open it without tearing off the top. The jacket is made of a thin cloth that feels very in scale with the figure, and features a real zipper to zip it up. While the zipper is small, it is not in scale, and looks really big compared to the figure. I don't really mind that, as I feel the hoodie still looks good overall, and let's face it, we're not going to get a fully in scale 1 12th zipper. The jacket has the snail shell smiley face logo on the left breast and a larger version on the back, and the right sleeve has some printing as well. The actual hood of this hoodie has a lot of room to accommodate big sculpted hair, and there's a wire where a drawstring usually is so you can sculpt the hood to lay realistically. It fits well on Milk Tea and as mentioned complements her guns very well. It also works with other 1 10th to 1 12th scale figures as long as it can get around their arms and body. It's a nice companion piece, and I think it'll be great for kit bashing. So overall, I really enjoy the Tapigao Milk Tea set. The figure is beautiful with an amazing body sculpt that really emphasizes the softness of her skin, and while there's a bit of a trade-off where Snail Shell has prioritized beauty over articulation, she still manages to have some above-average articulation points, specifically the arms and legs and their wide range of motion. 
I would have liked to see better articulation at the neck and torso, but there's no denying that the end result looks spectacular. The included guns and model kit form are highly detailed and quite intricate, but they do require some modeling skill to look their very best. Because of this do-it-yourself take on the accessories, it may be a turnoff to those who have no interest in model kits, but it may also be a sort of gateway product to get you interested in the hobby. If you like the little armory Figma sets where you similarly build the guns, then this will be right up your alley. So yes, I totally recommend getting her unless you really dislike putting plastic models together, as you will probably find the guns a frustrating exercise. But if you don't mind trying something new, or if you enjoy model kits, then this set is an excellent melding of the action figure and model kit worlds. So that about wraps up another review. If you're interested in this figure, you can check the link in the description below. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps me and it'd be great if I can do more reviews more often, but I really can't do that without your support. And it all starts with hitting that subscribe button. Thank you to all of you who have already subscribed. You're awesome and I love reading your comments. So let me know if this model kit action figure hybrid set works for you in the comments below and I'll see you in the next review. Jam out.